Hi, my name is Abe, and today I'm going to walk through a maximum minima problem with you, the kind that you might see on an exam. So here it is, written it out for you already. If f of x is equal to root x, what point on f of x is closest to the point 4, 0? Okay, so the very first thing you want to do, I'll write down steps for you, is ask the question, what function am I looking for? What function are you looking for? Okay, so here we talk about what closest, right? So maybe some kind of distance function. So you want some distance to some point from some graph. Big hint, draw yourself a graph. Draw a graph. It helps. So first thing you want to draw is probably f of x. f of x is root x. You all know what that looks like. It goes kind of like this, so on. And you also want the point 4, 0 in this graph. So I'm just going to say that 4, 0 is here, right? It's on the x-axis. This is the point 4, 0, like that. Now, what's the question asking? It's saying, OK, now, Let's pretend you're at some point on this graph, and there is a distance between this point and 4, 0. Let's call that D. Okay? You want to minimize that distance. You can see that if I were to pick a different point, I would have a different D. If I were to pick this point here, I would have this value as a D. It's all different lengths depending on where you pick that point. Good thing to see. Okay, so first, so now the question is, okay, how do you find D, right? Now, you might want to write some more about this point D. You know the coordinates of this point D are, let's just say, you don't know the point, right? So X is just going to be X, but what's Y? The Y coordinate is F of X, right? Which is root X. So the coordinate of your point is actually x and root x. Now, how do you find the distance between two points? There's a formula to do this anyway. So really, this first step doesn't even ask you to find what the function is. It simply goes, what are you looking for? And the answer to that first part is that you're looking for, you're looking for a distance function, right? You want d equals some function of x. You can see that as uh, as you change your x, your d will change, right? You, you, the distance between uh, the point 4, 0 and the point you pick depends on the point you pick. d equals f of x. Okay, I hope that part is pretty straightforward. The second part is generally the hardest part actually because the rest is mechanical. 2 is simply find the relevant function. Okay, so here you are. You know you want to find d as a function of x, right? Not difficult. You know that d, d is the distance between two points, isn't it? And the distance between two points, the formula looks like this. D is square root of, what is it, x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. You might remember this from you know, last year or year 9 or something. But if you don't remember the formula, it doesn't shouldn't bother you very much because you know that the distance you can work out using Pythagoras anyway. So basically x2 minus x1 is just uh, sort of this part here, that distance, and y2 minus y1 is this distance, yeah? And so you use Pythagoras to work out d. Now thankfully for you, x1, x2, y1, y2 are already known. They're marked out in the graph above. So all you need to do is really sub these in. So you go, okay, 
let's uh, let's just let twos x two and y two can be x and root x x one y one are four and zero right so all you do is you sub your numbers in not difficult uh, so x two minus x one x two is x x one is four squared plus y2 minus y1. y2 is root x, y1 is well, 0. Oh look, there it is. There's your d, and you might want to just simplify that out a little bit. So you can expand stuff, you can do x squared minus 8x plus 16, and this second part, oh, I'm sorry, didn't write my x properly. Well, that's really ugly. There we go. And that second part is simply root x squared. So just x, right? So you end up with this. You get d equals the square root of x squared minus 7x plus 16. Makes sense, right? Okay, you've got your function. That's the distance. So this function tells you that if I put in a function, if I pick, uh, if I put, if I pick x, right, which would give you some point on f of x, this function is going to spit out the distance between that point and the point four zero. Okay, most of your work is done already. Next, next, next. Step three. Step three for a maximum minimum problem. Generally differentiate. Differentiate and you find stationary point. Differentiate and just find the stationary point, right? Okay. Pretty simple to do. So let's go ahead. You know that we have d from below, so d dash is simply going to be, alright, so we have the square root of some function, right? We know the square root is a power of a half, so differentiating quickly, you just treat the inside as one function, so you've got just got square root. To differentiate a square root, you bring down the power, which is half, so you go half. Now the inside stays the same, x squared minus 7x plus 16. Except the power on this is now not half, but negative half, right? Because we've taken one away from the power. And then you just multiply all that by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x minus 7. There it is, all done. Now, I want to clean this up a little bit. So I want to put the negative power on the bottom and recognize that power of half is just root. So if you reorganize that a little nicer, you'll see that you get 2x minus 7 over 2 root x squared minus 7x plus 16. And there it is. Sorry, that's d dash, not d. d dash. Mm. Dash. There. Okay. So you know that you want this derivative function to equal zero because at a zero you're going to find your stationary point, right? You hope it's going to be a minimum and we'll demonstrate later that it's a minimum. So basically you want d dash equals zero. So you want zero to equal your whole function. 2x minus 7 over the square root, 2 times the square root, of x squared minus 7x plus 16. Okay, first thing, if the top were to equal 0, the whole function would equal 0, right? If you have 0 divided by something, it doesn't matter what you divide it by, it's just going to be 0. So, really, what we're doing is solving this simple function. 0 equals 2x minus 7. Oh, you all know how to do that. 
and you'll see that x is equal 7 on 2. Is that finished? No. Actually, no. Because you want to see on the bottom, right, this bottom part could potentially behave strangely. For instance, if the bottom equals 0, you know that your function's a bit stuffed, right? Things don't exist and stuff like that. So you've got a quadratic on the bottom. So you don't want the inside of that square root to equal 0. So, several things you can do to check. Um, you could graph the thing, see if there's any funny asymptote action. Or you could just do what I'm about to do, which is just find... If you find the, um, the discriminant... Oops, sorry. I don't mean to do that. Find the discriminant of that quadratic inside. The discriminant, remember, is b squared minus 4ac, right? And so it's just simply 7 squared, 49, minus 4 times 1 times 16. And that comes out as negative 15. If, it's, if you have a negative discriminant, you know that this quadratic never equals 0. So we're safe. Okay, so we know that x equals 7 on 2. But are we finished? No. Whenever you find what you want, you need to show that, or you need to go back to your question, really, and look at what exactly are they after. Notice that they want point. You want a point on f of x. Get a point on f of x. So the fourth step, the last step, is this. Mm, four is check what the question wants and also check that you have the correct stationary point. So in this case, you want a minimum, right? So you need to do that. The question wants this. The question says you want a point, which means they want some coordinates. So pretty simple. You just want to find out what y equals when x equals 7 on 2, right? Not difficult. So when x... Sorry, I'll use red. When x equals 7 on 2, y equals root 7 on 2, right? Rise root x. You can't express things like that. To express it nicely, you need to say, you need to do uh, multiply top and bottom by root 2, so that you have a rational denominator. So you're going to get, you're going to get root 14 over right and so therefore your final answer is going to be 7 on 2 root 14 on 2 and that is the closest point on f of x to the point 4 0 now you just want to quickly check that it's a correct stationary point notice you only found one generally if you find one it's most likely right but you can either graph a d, the graph our d function, so simply this function here, sorry, not that one, <laughs> that's a derivative, graph this function, and you'll see that it's got one stationary point and one minimum, that's simple, or you could just see that 2x minus 7, right, the derivative, it goes from as you, as, as you get closer to our stationary point, it gets from negative to positive, meaning that the gradient goes, mm, where can I draw, goes negative, neutral, positive, negative, neutral, positive. Looks like a minimum, right? And that's how you can find out. So yeah, there it is. All maximum minimum problems are solved this way. Look for the, find what function you're looking for, find the relevant function from the question, and then differentiate it, find a stationary point, and then go back to the question, check whether that's exactly what the question wants, and also just double check that you have the correct kind of stationary point. 
Hope you've enjoyed yourself. I'll see you next time.